They brought Hitmonlee back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and the greatest Hitmon is an insane threat. It has an amazing base 120 attack, but with only 87 speed, it could use some help. Luckily, its ability on Burden does just that. On Burden effectively doubles your speed when you use an item, and we can pair this with a normal gem. The normal gem is a hold item that boosts the power of normal type moves by 30%. Hitmonlee can then use Fake Out, activate the normal gem, grab some nice little chip damage, and also get a free turn due to the flinch. This then activates Unburdened by using up the item, and Hitmonlee becomes a crazy fast sweeper with stab close combat and coverage with moves like Knock Off and Rock Slide. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. The DLC has brought us many new things to test out, and I plan on doing it all here on the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss a thing, and let's go ahead and jump into the battle. All right, so my opponent is gonna lead off with the old classic, regularly sized neck Raikou, and I decide to toss out the Golurk. So this is actually an, is an interesting matchup because Raikou gets access to Scald, so they could consider staying in going for that. It's probably not worth it for them to risk taking an Earthquake. So I imagine they're actually going to switch into the check to this thing, which is going to be the Gliscor, which they do actually end up making the switch that I expect. And this is the most satisfying thing ever. I actually go for the trick on this. We're going to give it our choice band, but more importantly, I'm actually going to take this thing's Toxic Orb before it gets a chance to poison itself. And now a Gliscor without a poison is a way less threatening Gliscor, so that is amazing. However, I do get myself poisoned, I'm honestly fine with that. It's literally like the most satisfying thing ever, take, <laughs> taking this thing's Toxic Orb before it can poison itself. So, Band-Aid says no poison healing for you today, good sir. Allows me to freely set up my Stealth Rock as they opt to start setting up some spikes. So, this thing having the Choice Band is actually also amazing. It makes it way more predictable, it locks itself into the spikes here. So. I know there's going to be no crazy shenanigans, and at this point I consider I can actually freely get in the uh, the gouging fire here, and knowing that they're just going to stay in, go for a spikes, I could potentially start to set up here. I want to come in before there's too many layers of spikes at this point, uh, but gouging fire is an insane threat at this point. I can come in, I activate the protosynthesis through the booster energy, get myself a nice little attack boost, and they just go for another layer of spikes. So I don't have hazard control on this team, so I do have to deal with the spikes, but I'm in a pretty good position to try to go ahead for a Dragon Dance here. Now, they do have a Clefable on their team. A lot of the times, those are running unaware to stop setups. They are actually going to end up switching into the Clefable. I figure, most often than not, I do see these things running the Magic Art ability. Um, so, it actually comes in, it doesn't take any Stealth Rock damage, tells me that this thing is going to be Magic Guard, rather than unaware. So, that's going to mean that Gouging Fire is an insane position here. So, at this point, I figure I want all the damage that I can possibly get. I'm going to go for that Terra Fire and get the Flare Blitz off. I want to ensure that this Chewed Gum piece of Fairy-type ass gets sent to the Shadow Realm where it belongs. So, I'm going to go for that Terra Fire, and I would not like to be on the receiving end of the, <laughs> the Flare Blitz, especially with Buddy's crazy-ass shield on his head. It kind of got some crazy banana situation going on. I go for that Flare Blitz, and I'll tell you what, the Clef is not going to have a good time with that one. So, here's what's important about that. We're actually able to knock out the Clefable. It gets a critical hit that I don't believe matters. But, more importantly, that actually is going to open up the late game for my Hitmonlee. Looking at their team, if I can get my Unburden activated with the Hitmonlee, I can do a lot of damage uh, and outspeed pretty much their entire team. That Clefable was kind of the one check to the Hitmonlee. Uh, in saving, and the Monly in the back is looking nice, essentially. So, now they decide to go into Iron Boulder. So, it's actually going to activate a nice little speed boost. This thing is naturally fast as hell anyway. I decide to go for the Burning Bulwark. And this is a match that happened pretty much right after the DLC dropped. And check this out. It goes for the Mighty Cleave, straight up goes through Protect. This is literally how I found out <laughs> that this thing's signature move goes through Protect. I get absolutely bamboozled. And that was not ideal. Turns out uh, Pioneers used to drive these babies for miles and they just be straight up going through Protect. So that is a misplay on my end and I've got to bounce back. So this thing did activate its Protosynthesis through that booster energy already. And if I can go into Golurk, I can essentially force this thing to switch out effectively, not having to worry about this thing being extremely fast later. So Golurk comes in. I know that I can take an attack from this thing and hit really hard with the Poltergeist. So that's exactly what we are going to do and shiny ass boulder boy does not want to deal with the Golurk. So they decide to go right back on into the Gliscor. It's actually kind of hilarious. I give this thing a choice band and then I just have the absolute gall to take that choice band and then beat the shit out of him with it. It's kind of the funniest thing ever. I take the choice band, 
I get some solid damage there with the Poltergeist, and at this point, we know that the Gliscor is going to be choice banned. So there's a number of different things this can do. Uh, it can Earthquake, it could go for something like a knockoff. Uh, I do know, however, that Golurk is a great check to that Iron Boulder. So I do want to conserve, and they're actually going to end up switching out themselves. So they go into the Chinchino, as we got a nice little double switch situation here, a little little blind date happening. Chinchino comes in wearing his nicest scarf, looking absolutely dapper. However, I bring in the Feraligator, so the double switch results in Feraligator already having his butt cheeks out on the first blind date here. And it turns out, Chinchino does not look like, like the pictures that we imagined. And I find myself in a spot where I cannot allow this thing to set up a tidy up, so I essentially have to stay in here, force them to go for that bullet seed, especially you know, with the loaded dice and technician, that is definitely going to take out the gator. So, Fraligator goes down for essentially nothing, um, and the double switch kind of screws me over there. So, it is what it is. I Essentially, I f I'm forced to stay in there, because if they do tidy up, they become then extremely fast, and then hit pretty much everything extremely hard. But, I do have a steel type in the form of Metagross, who can come in relatively freely on this thing, and I can, uh, I can try to make some stuff happen with the, the crazy ass Xbox 360. So, I figure they are likely going to switch here. There's no reason for them to keep this thing in. I can then go for a Trailblaze, hit whatever they decide to switch in, grab myself a nice little speed boost, and then uh, essentially, you know, just let Metagross go ahead and pop off here. So, speaking of pop off, they decide to bring in the Golden Go. Now, this thing is going to be carrying the Air Balloon, and <laughs> I figure I'm just going to go ahead and pop that with my Trailblaze. Absolutely rain on Buddy's Parade, pop his balloon, and that actually puts us in a fantastic spot because... Now, with that air balloon gone, I'm free to go for an earthquake, and with that trailblaze, I am going to be faster with the metagross. So, we are looking pretty solid here. I'm just going to commit for that earthquake, and they are going to go for the Terra. That's essentially what I'm worried about at this point. Whenever, you know, it's the middle of the match and they haven't used the Terra, it's, it's, it's common. You just, there's no way to really predict it, but they are going to go for the Terra fighting. Now, what that's going to do is basically just make it so they are no longer weak to the earthquake. Uh, however, I do actually still outspeed. That's going to do a nice little chunk with the Earthquake, but because it's no longer Steel-type, it can then fire off a Shadow Ball, and that is going to take care of the Metagross. So, that is a damn bummer. Metagross was about to go absolutely crazy, but sometimes the Terra is just going to pull all the momentum from you. So, half the team is gone at this point, but I get a free switch, and I decide to go into the Hydrapple. Uh, this is Assault Vest Hydrapple, greatest new mon in the game. This thing is an absolute beast. I know that I can take essentially any attack this wants to throw at me. And they don't really have a whole lot that wants to switch into this. Again, with Clefable being gone, it definitely opens this thing up as well. So, they actually just decide to stay in, go for the Make It Rain. It's going to do a nice little chunk of damage, but I'm max HP, I'm Assault Vest, and I'm Snakeheads inside of a Golden Apple. What else could you expect from this thing? I go for that Fickle Beam, and we're able to take care of the Golden Go. So, that is amazing, mostly because... Now they have burnt the Terra, there's going to be no more surprise type changes. However, now they get to switch into whatever they like, and it turns out, you know, old Snake Apple Snapple out here is not the fastest, so they have a lot of fast options they can go into. They opt for the Iron Boulder. Comes in, takes a little bit of chip from that Stealth Rock, but essentially I have nothing that can switch into this. I have to allow them to go for that Mighty Cleave, and that does take care of the Hydrapple. So at this point, I'm down to two Pokemon left. My win condition that I'm relying on is going to be the Hitmonlee. I feel like I can get this thing to work late game, and I basically need I need a little bit of an opening here. So what I decide to do first is I'm going to go into Golurk. Now, Golurk actually finds himself in kind of a weird spot. I can't click Poltergeist against this thing because it already used up its item. It has no item, and you can't Poltergeist that. So Band-Aid is in a little bit of a pickle here, and I'm forced to go for the Earthquake. But they know that I basically have to Earthquake here, and they're going to end up switching back into the Gliscor, who ain't looking so hot, for real. He comes in on Stealth Rock. He's not poisoned. I go for that Earthquake, and of course, yeah, it's not going to affect it. So uh, at least the good news is once this Gliscor kind of reveals what it's going to go for, I can essentially be fine with Hitmonlee. So the plan is essentially I'm going to go for the Poltergeist, uh, try to knock this thing out, however, it is faster, goes for that Choice Bandit Earthquake, and that is going to finish off the old Iron Giant. So, now they have half of their team left, and I have a drumstick. He is absolutely ready to party, and this thing is in full form. I have my normal gem fully ready to go, and here is how it's about to go down. So, I can bring in the Monly. I get hurt by a little bit of spikes, but at this health, I'm feeling pretty confident. I can go for the Fake Out. And we do get the nice little boost from the normal gem. Extra damage is always nice, but more importantly, it's going to use up our item, effectively activating our Unburden ability, which now we have double speed, and we're looking faster than their entire team. So, 
I need to play this safe. I can't finish this thing off with a close combat because I need to keep my defenses up. So I'm gonna go for the knockoff. It does have enough power. I was able to get enough chip on the Gliscor to take care of it. And down goes one of the big threats. So this now opens the door for them to switch into whatever they like. Now, the one Pokemon that can live in attack is going to be the Raikou. We haven't seen this buddy since the beginning. He comes in, takes a little bit of chip, and I know a close combat isn't going to be able to knock this thing out here, which means that I effectively have to take an attack. And luckily, Hitmonlee has amazing special defense for what it is. I'm then forced to go for the knockoff first. I go for the knockoff first because if I close combat, I lower my special defense and Thunderbolt kills. But since I was able to get that amount of chip with that knockoff, now this thing is in range for close combat to kill. I take the Thunderbolt exactly how we planned and the close combat does finish off the Raikou. So that's pretty much the biggest threat out of the way. And now their final Pokemon are gonna be the Iron Boulder along with the Chinchino. So they decide to go with the Boulder first. He's not a Boulder, he's a rock. The Pioneers used to drive these babies for miles, but also this thing is extremely fast. It has like base 124 speed. However, Hitmonlee with Unburden does outspeed as long as it doesn't have a speed boost and a close combat is enough to take care of it. So. That is another massively insane threat out of the way. And now it's me, my drumstick, and this here chinchilla. So this thing can come in here. Again, another extremely fast Pokemon at base 115 speed, but Unburdened Hitmonlee is not afraid of no little chinchilla. So essentially I can go for that close combat. They don't have the ability to Terra, and that is going to finish off the game. So the Hitmonlee came in extremely cut clutch in this match. This is one of my favorite kind of revenge sweeper Pokemon. If you can take care of threats that check this thing, there's not a lot that uh, people can do uh, in Hitmonlee. Could not have been more clutch there. So thank you guys very much for watching. For I thought this was a super fun match. I'm very glad that Hitmonlee is back. Shout out to Game Freak for doing it for me. Yeah, I've been using this set for years. And go ahead and leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. It really does help out the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.